What is up fellow filmmakers? My name is Dodd and <sighs> hey Netflix. This is how you make a high school drama. I watched the third season of Sex Education and it's fantastic. Consider this bit a formal request to Netflix. Uh, please, please don't make a fourth season. Just don't ruin it. If they do for some reason and it would be good, I would gladly eat my rewards, but but I'm not here to uh, waste your time talking about how great the show is, how I had my emotional roller coaster watching it. Just like just watch it for yourself. It's really good. Today, instead of saying how Sex Education Free is amazing, I would like to compare it to 13 Reasons Why. I would mainly focus on the last seasons of the both shows. I hope the third season of Sex Education is the last one. And yes, this. Uh, comparison would not have any spoilers. So you can watch it without caution. Please leave a like, subscribe. Hello everyone again, Editing Dan here again. Just wanted to quickly say thank you for all the support I got on the last video. Uh, just it was incredible, it means so much to me. I cannot apprehend how much this means to me. Just thank you. You, you can see already that this video I'm recorded also very tired and if my voice sounded uh, a little bit more annoying than it usually does is because I am very sick. <laughs> I was very sick at the point in time when I was recording this video. So just, yeah, just thank you for all the support and just ignore my tired face, please. <laughs> yeah, just go on to the video. Enjoy, enjoy, I hope you enjoy me. <laughs> first things first, I would like to establish that I don't like hating stuff. I know that there is people behind production of it and there is a lot of other factors that they hate is just not good. I made a whole video talking about how hate is not very good for any kind of media. You can watch it by clicking somewhere there or by following the link in the description after you watch this video. <sighs> but 13 Reasons Why isn't any good. To be fair, uh, first season was okay, was fine, and second was, nah, I guess it will pass anyway. But third and fourth season were a abomination. To give some credit to the authors, Troy Sivan's song, The Good Side, is the best thing that has happened to the fourth season of 13 Reasons Why. Thank God for Troy Sivan. Let's first of all talk about the characters. The only likeable character in 13 Reasons Why is Hannah Baker. And the show constantly tries to prove us wrong about it. Like, for example, when they brought over a girl from another school that Hannah bullied and all the other characters try to say that Hannah was insane. It just doesn't work. Doesn't work for me, doesn't work for anyone, for that matter. And in the sex education, all the characters are likeable, and most importantly, they are relatable to almost anyone to some degree. You, you know, it is a constant struggle to say who is your favorite character, because they're all your favorite. Take, for example, Odin's mother, Jean, or Eric, or Mae Wiley, for that matter. Next thing is that they both shows, they try to play on your emotions. Let's take, for example, first two seasons of Sex Education. We have Otis and Maeve. Fanbase wants them to be together, but the writers very cleverly play with our emotions by making Maeve uh, date Jackson and Otis uh, date Ola. As, for example, uh, Maeve and Jackson start to fall apart, Otis and Ola start to grow stronger, and the vice versa, which is a very cool uh, method to play with our emotions, which is good and it invests us more in the story. When 13 Reasons Why, instead of doing some proper writing just quickly, changes itself to a murder mystery detective genre. And the thing is, the moral dilemma in sex education isn't between guilty teenagers who are trying to save the world by shifting blame to someone else, who the viewers actually like, and innocent teenagers who the show tries to make us hate. Whereas in sex education, it just between the people. The people that you relate to and just, you like watching, you like both of them, and you see them having a conflict and it breaks your heart, basically. 
you can make a not compelling character likable, even the main hero like The Last of Us brilliantly did. Just when you look at the high school murder mystery, you just sit there and say, Mie vero. <laughs> Some of my roots came out of that bit. <sighs> Sorry. The problems that sex education touches, they don't feel dragged. Of course non-binary people could have been introduced earlier, not as a hopping of a trend, a, as a form of queer washing, but I'm, I'm still glad they are there, so let's just move on. The problems that 13 Reasons Why try to discuss is just, they are very not grounded and they just scratch the top. Just like, take for example, a scene where Clay screams at the principal claiming that you're killing us! Every day! Every day! Every I'm day! Not, I am not your goddamn son! Get the fuck away from me! We are children! And in season three of Sex Education, there's a similar scene which contains student rebellion. Yet you are more invested in the sex education story rather than just screaming uh, that didn't have any build up to it which is happening all the time in 13 Reasons Why. And it's just basic writing. There was no proper build-up. Of course there was, there was foreshadowing and etc. But in the end, there was no satisfying climax of that build-up because it wasn't properly structured. If you want to tell a story about how kids are being oppressed by all the, by all the mass shootings and and all the racism from policemen who are trying to control the school from not being shot at. Just please don't scratch the top. Focus on this exact story. It's just basic plot structure that they incompetently done. And that not touching all the controversial stuff like LGBT or racism or just generally the theme of this show, suicide. One might argue that the two shows have different purposes and different target audiences uh, and one takes itself more seriously than the other and just generally sex education is supposed to be a comedy. That would be a brilliant argument, only not if they were both claimed also as dramas. I was jumping off the chair when I was watching Sex Education 3 and turning my iPad off, basically because I was very emotionally invested in the story. This is the video that I sent to my friends uh, when I was watching the season finale. It doesn't happen when you watch 13 Reasons Why, unfortunately. Again, because of the incompetently done uh, build-up and not satisfying climax. Basically, 13 Reasons Why touches a problem, but never gives a solution to it. Of course, modern media shouldn't be an encyclopedia on how to live throughout certain situations, of course. But basically, 13 Reasons Why not only doesn't give you a solution, nor does it give you a resolution, which I already talked about in Satisfying Climax. So, when you watch it, you sit there and be like, okay... and... 13 Reasons Why lacks implementation, not because the problems they raise in the show are relatable to anyone, it's just the fact that they are told through some impossible circumstances which often seem ridiculous. To put it simply, when you watch Sex Education, you watch a story that you are invested in because of the characters, the chemistry and finely structured plot. When, in 13 Reasons Why, there are some problems that are being thrown to the plot just because... Just because. It's already overwhelming by itself, and the sheer explicit that the plot is is just a slap in the face that doesn't quite teach us anything, nor does it leave a view with a satisfaction on watching the show, which I already mentioned earlier. Not only that 13 Reasons Why overwhelms you with explicity of the race topics and the problems, and the fact that they are all unsolved, but also it overwhelms you with unnecessary plot lines that no one asked for, uh, and no one was interested or invested in. Like, why the fuck do I need to know how Clay got into Brown because his French and his essay? It's like, this, it is drama 
for the sole purpose of drama. And it's really unnecessary because the whole show was already enough. So my advice to all the writers who might watch this video, or just a general content lover who would like to think in a more critical fashion, is to not overcomplicate the plot with explicit storylines. So I'd say Netflix did a pretty decent job on their mistake. They were not pushed to make a sequel to the sequel because of money, no, they were pushed by the fan base, just wanting to ship a character with another. I'm going to once again bring The Last of Us, since The Party was the kind of story that the writers needed to tell. And the same thing happened to the sex education. It is a good balance between ending the story in the best way possible, satisfying the fan base, and being successful in terms of selling the subscriptions for Netflix. So I guess I said everything that I wanted to say. If you like this more fast-paced format, please leave a like, subscribe, write a comment, just, yeah, support me and... Yeah, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.